What's up guys, Dan from Lani here and welcome back to a new video. The other day I went on a flying trip, not on an airplane or anything like that, but to find a drone with my friend Paolo, the one of the drones. So we went to this place called Almonacid, not far away from Toledo and not very far away from Madrid. I took the opportunity to shoot quite a few videos. I mean, I shot something with a Canon R6, with a Canon R7 for both my channels. For this one that you are watching, which is my first channel. And for my Spanish channel. You know, Spanish is not my language. I barely speak it. But having this channel now in Spanish forces me to practice a little bit more. Anyways, in this one video I want to show you something I shot with the Canon R7 using the EF 135mm F2 with the regular adapter. Here I have it. This is the combo. So, let's start from the beginning. What I did, I introduced the topic with the Canon R7, of course, on a tripod with the 16 to 35 millimeters. This. And the regular adapter. Ahora estoy utilizando la Canon R7 con el 16-35. And then I kept the regular adapter on and I put the 135 millimeters EF. And this is what I got. Okay, I was so far away from the camera because we have to keep in mind that the Canon R7 is a crop sensor camera that crops the image times 1.6, which is quite a lot. So I was forced to stay something like 12, 15 meters away from the camera. And honestly, I couldn't see anything from the, from the LCD screen. And I don't know if it was a miracle or if it just had a lot of luck that I eventually managed to, to frame myself decently. The results are pretty good. I mean, I'm not surprised because I already know that the Canon R7 is a great camera. It's just that with a tele lens, if you want to film yourself, it's a bit of a challenge. I can say I could have used the app to see myself for my smartphone, but honestly, that app, when you use it with Bluetooth only, is not really reliable. Actually, not even when you use it with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Anyways, ah, almost forgot. If you're still watching, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And check the links in the description to see all my gear, stuff and things, my gear. And check the link to Epidemic Sound if you want one month of awesome music and great sound effects. One month for free. After filming with the Canon R7 and the 135mm with the regular adapter, I took out this. What is it? Like you don't already know. It's a speed booster. And what does it do? Well, first of all, it's an adapter. With this, you can adapt EF lenses, EF lenses only, on our mount cameras, like the R6, R5, R3, but also R7, R8, all of them. What else does it do? Well, it's a speed booster. So it multiplies the focal length of the lens times 0.71 so that when you use it on a crop sensor camera, like you're supposed to do, the 1.6 crop is almost cancelled. Almost. So the final image that we get with this almost looks as wide as a full frame. Not completely, but almost. So, as I was saying, I put it on my Canon R7 with the EF 135mm F2. And this is what happened. You, you don't see you, you don't see it much 
you probably didn't notice it got wider but it's because to frame it the same way like I was framed when I was using the regular adapter I was able to get closer to the camera much closer just like if I was using a full frame camera more or less then there's also another thing that a speed booster does it gets us more light so that usually when I use a speed booster on any EF lens the aperture the aperture of the lens the maximum aperture goes down like for example when I use it on the nifty 50 the 50 millimeters f 1.8 its maximum aperture with a speed booster goes down to f 1.2 so I was expecting that the same would have happened when using it with the 135 millimeters right right actually not and I was kind of disappointed at first because I was expecting the maximum aperture to go down to f1.4 but no on the screen it still said f2 but I noticed in post when I watched the files that actually even though officially the maximum aperture didn't change I got more light just like if the aperture was even wider and that's amazing definitely a plus I wanted to experiment also shooting in different conditions because there's one thing about this lens the 135 millimeters EF version that when the light comes from behind the subject we lose a lot of contrast a lot of saturation and some quality and also we tend to get some very bad flares very easily because sometimes you know flares are flattering we can use it in our favor but with this lens that's not gonna happen I mean you can try it's not impossible but most of the times it just looks like a big bubble covering the subject we notice it even more in photos especially when we shoot vertical like in this shot so what can I say again leave a comment down below and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already Well, I think we didn't lose completely the saturation, contrast or anything. I mean, when we shoot in C-Log, we can recover it pretty well in post. I do it in DaVinci Resolve and I mean, no big deal. So for the quality of the image, no problem. And what about the bubble, the flare? It's there. Yes, indeed. I even tried to avoid it somehow, like I set the camera in a different way, in a different angle, but as you can see, the flare is still there not much but you can see it it's right there how can we solve this issue which I think it's the only flaw of this lens well, it's very easy I mean not always but we can try to fix it with the lens hood here we have it well then why didn't I do it in the video in the samples you just watched well it's because since I was making a video and the Sun was very harsh and strong there was so much light I had to use an ND filter a variable ND filter like this So the size of this filter is 82 millimeters, the size of my other lenses. And the diameter of the 135 millimeters EF version is 72 millimeters. So when I put this on the lens, then there's no way for me to put the lens hood. It just doesn't fit. So when I do photos, I don't need ND filters unless I want to create something very particular. I can just play around with the shutter speed and everything so I can keep a wide aperture, expose the shot correctly. But for video, I do need ND filters. I do need this variable ND filter. When I put it on, 
with a step up ring to adapt it to the size of the lens the lens hood won't fit anymore so what can i say i love this lens also with the canon r7 with the regular adapter is great but if i want to film myself with the 135 millimeters and the regular adapter i definitely need an assistant someone who can help me to frame myself and using the speed booster gives me a lot of advantages. The most important one, I can get closer to the camera. I can get a wider field of view. Anyways, this lens is not for everybody. It's for people who love being creative, people who are not afraid to miss the shot, because that's gonna happen. Especially if your camera doesn't have IVIS. If your camera doesn't have it, most of the shots will be blurred because it's a 135 millimeters. It's almost impossible to keep completely steady. I'm not saying it's impossible, okay, but it's really challenging. I'm gonna test this lens for stabilization, like with the IBIS of both the Canon R6 and the Canon R7, and we'll see what happens. Other things I can say about this lens, I'm sure the new version, the RF 135 millimeters, is better, performs better, it has stabilization, the aperture is f1.8, I believe, and it's meant for these cameras mirrorless cameras. But here comes the advantage of the old one, the EF version, this 135 millimeters, which was produced for the first time in 1996. The advantage is that to use it on our mount cameras, we need an adapter and we can use the speed booster. So on our Canon R7, we can make it look like if the Canon R7 was a full frame. And this would not happen if we use the RF version the new one, because it's an RF lens. You don't need any adapter, so you can't use a speed booster. And on the Canon R7, all you get is an image with a 1.6 crop. I guess I don't have anything else to say. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, smash the like button right now and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah.